any startup the initial years are full of uncertainties you know all sorts of challenges and i'm sh- pretty sure that that was the case with you as well right. what did you do to overcome these challenges I think one of the things that really helped us uh, was being laser focused on what we want to deliver to the consumer. We were very clear about the kind of products kids eat when they're going to school. People eat in their different boxes, and we just wanted to make sure that we solve that for the consumer. We solve that for the mother who is hurried in the morning making tiffin boxes, and we just were very focused on the consumer pain point. That was one thing that helped. The second thing was, I mean, we also started during COVID, COVID wave two. so there was a lot of uncertainty it was difficult to do consumer research etc but uh, we we said let listen our job is to make sure that we make the consumer's life easy so let's just be laser focused no matter how much time it takes so we took a little more time than usual to start off but when we did we ran with speed okay um the general notion right now is that this is a good time for startups to come up in india right mm-hmm. i want to understand from you first of all is that is that true and if yes then why i think uh, india uh, has been for the last 10 years constantly been called out as the land of opportunities surely because of the number of things that can be done here the openness of the government and just the number of people right so there are multiple challenges the country has and hence it becomes a very large uh, market for a very large number of categories so the opportunity definitely stays there the good part is today the ecosystem is waking up and uh, today there are multiple companies which are noticing micro gaps in the uh, you know uh, uh, landscape today and are actually building solutions to focus on those micro gaps earlier what used to happen was large global solutions copy pasted in india that's not the case anymore so today we have got multiple solutions in every uh, sector which are made for india which is great because this is basically building the foundation of what is there to come in the next 50 years so i'm all two thumbs up for india all right um going forward in 2023 what can we expect from you what are your future growth plans i think uh, the task at hand for us is fairly large uh, we see a huge market in india i don't even want to uh, talk about the market beyond uh, our borders but in india itself uh in urban centers like i said 73% of people are deficient in protein 55% of school going kids are deficient in protein so the task at hand is pretty large for us and i think it's not only us but multiple companies that should be joining us in the purpose that we have so we definitely look at more distribution in the next few months more products in the next few months and definitely definitely making sure that we are making our products well aware the consumer well aware of what we have to offer uh apart from product building i think it's important for us as a brand to educate the consumer of what happens if there is less protein in their bodies and that's something that we'll continue to do all right this last question is not part of the script but i'm really curious and i want to understand for a long time brands have been selling healthy foods you know but uh, like take uh, for example take one meter right they have been selling their drink as a health drink for yeah, ages right But if you look at it, it's fifty percent sugar. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? How is the health food sector uh, evolving in India? Um, first of all, I think um, only health products, right? Products which are possibly not tasty but extremely healthy, have a much smaller market in India. It becomes difficult for regular consumption in Indian households to have a product which is not tasty but only healthy. right so brands the way they look at it is ki how do you make sure that there is health on the table along with taste i think there needs to be some amount of guardrails that large brands also need to function with because um there are uh, you know today the consumer is a lot more aware the consumer is looking at the back of pack and making decisions they're looking at the nutritional values of each ingredient that go, that's going in the second thing is there are a lot of new age brands which are challenging the status quo and they're challenging large brands right so if for example x brand does not change which has been a market leader for a very long period of time there'll be new x y z coming into the market which will exactly be pinpointing the solution which the large brand is not offering so i don't think this is a time to be complacent whether it is uh, the food industry or the beverage industry it is important that even large brands uh, brands take cognizance of the fact that the consumer is hyper aware today all right yeah thank you so much for chatting with us pleasure having you and once again congratulations on your win thank you thanks